Hi, I'm June Rall, your Florida IF Day Director. On behalf of the Florida Department of Health and IF Day, I welcome all of you to IF Day's Webinar Wednesday. All of you play such an important role in preparing students for post-secondary education and employment. So I hope that you will find this webinar very interesting to you. The webinar today, Promoting Successful Transitions to Post-Secondary Education and Employment Through Contextualized Learning and Instruction, will be facilitated by two subject matter experts in the field, Carolyn Allen and Judy Johnson. So from all of us, thank you for attending, and I'll turn it over to our facilitators. Hello, I'm Judy Johnson. I'm the director at Taylor Technical Institute in Taylor County. And I'm Carolyn Allen. I'm former supervisor of adult and community education in Pasco County, now retired, and now working with IPDE with all the CCRS initiatives around the state and conducting these webinars. And we're glad everyone is here with us today. We're excited to be here. Just a few reminders, feel free to ask questions. We'll try to answer as many as we can along the way. And don't hesitate to send us some additional questions afterwards uh, via our email addresses. And again, we'll continue to stay in touch. All righty, so let's get started. In this session, give me one second. In this session, we will identify our role in helping to prepare students for successful transitions through contextualized instruction. And we'll talk to you about what that is, how, uh, what it looks like, and why it's so powerful in helping our students make those transitions. I will identify some of the strategies and activities that support student learning and share online resources that you can use to get started. All right, our goal for preparing students uh, at all levels is to ensure that they are college and career ready, uh, ready for success in post-secondary programs, and to make sure that they're ready for successful employment. We want to promote the use of students' career cluster preferences, um, identified through a tool such as Florida Choices or the Cooter software, and focus on employability and re relevant employability skills within our instruction. Uh, incorporating the college and career readiness standards uh, and skills will promote effective transitions, and we're going to talk a little bit today about what that really looks like in our classrooms. So for the workplace, we want to connect college and career readiness standards for entry-level positions for the 21st century workplace and really help connect students to real-world situations by actively engaging them in contextualized reading, mathematics, communication, and problem-solving activities, all of those academic skills that we focus on in adult education. Our role is to help our students understand and embrace the importance of career pathways. Having a clear direction for where they're going after their adult ed experience will help engage students. Um, it will also help increase their knowledge and implementation of, of contextualized integrated uh, instruction options. So we'll be working through some of those um, strategies with you today. And enhancing student intake and advisement activities to strengthen connections between chosen career pathways and successful completion of adult ed, college, and career readiness curriculum. I wanted to spend a few minutes today because I think a lot of people have heard WIOA. They've either heard their supervisors or their administrators or they know about WIOA themselves. But I really didn't know the depth of what this act, now law, covers for adult and community education. So I thought it might be interesting for us to go through this um, and everyone be on the same page as we move forward. Um, most of you know, um, <clears throat> again, that they're in the WIOA law, it specifically states that it will strengthen the alignment between adult education, post-secondary education, and employers. Um, some people might not even know that WIOA stands for Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act um, of Title II. Actually, it was signed into law in July of 2014 it does not become implemented until 2015 um, in July. Um, but what we need to remember is that it is and it will be authorized until 2000, 
and 20, which means most everybody out there right now who's working with adult education, this is definitely something that is going to impact all of us. Uh, it'll impact our programs. It'll impact our students. It really is going to drive um, the face of adult education uh, for the new years and will help us make decisions on how we move forward. Why are we doing this? Why did they do this? And why did the President of the United States sign this into law? Um, actually, when you look at the numbers, right now it looks pretty dim. 3.1 million long-term unemployed people in our United States. 24 million workers with low literacy skills. 46 million people who struggle every day dealing with basic and higher level math skills. This gives us the validity to move forward with what we're doing. Uh, we started this year by doing training through IFDE with the College Inquiry Readiness Standards. We've talked repeatedly about the need to raise the bar, and you can see that the United States, through our president, through our, all of the organizations of our U.S. Department of Education is now strengthening this. When you look at this slide, you see that how can we accomplish what they have told us that we are going to do. And it's very, very telling. Things that Florida has been discussing and have been training on for several years now is in law. And one of those things you can see right there is integrating that adult education with our occupational education and training. And the second one, and most importantly, um, since we just had an institute uh, last month and we've had toolkits and we've had trainings throughout the years, the career, the career pathway system. Um, the, some of the new things that are going on, you'll see that EL Civics is, a, is actually spelled out that, the, that this new act will now include integrating occupational training within that and also more emphasis on working with our employers um, to decide what kind of activities do they feel we should be doing through adult education. And one thing that's not on this slide that's also important if we have any of our corrections people who are out there specifically within the new law, corrections is noted as well. So we don't want you to feel left out um, in this whole career pathways and contextualized instruction movement. Many people have been through lots of training with Career Pathways. Some of you have not. Some, I hope today, are brand new to adult ed and are coming to adult education with excitement, new ideas, whether you come from the business world, from an organization, from an agency, or from the K-12 world. It makes us all richer by the new people who join us in our, uh, all of the pursuits that we do through adult education. Um, there are so many models. I did not realize until I, until I started doing research for this webinar um, how many different ways of saying the same thing there is when it comes to career pathways. They're all very important. Each one has a little different twist to it, but most of them, if not all of them, contain um, these six elements and some have been updated. But when you talk about a comprehensive career pathways program, those of you who have been fortunate enough to go through the trainings and the institutes um, will recognize these. Um, building those cross-agency partnerships and engaging our employers. Again, one of the most important things that was stressed in the new law. We've got to get out there and find and empower our local employers and find out what they want, what they need for their lo the jobs in your local communities, but also make them a partner in developing your own contextualized curriculum. Um, Part of that uh, goes with helping them understand what their role is. A lot of times they want to, I hope they want to write you a check. Well, that's great, but that's not what we're talking about per se. We're talking about actually getting them and to empower us and be partners with us and become part of the educational whole, 
world that we live in day to day. And that moves right into designing programs. You really have to have that information in order to, to design a program that's going to meet the needs of your local communities. So it's very important. And that's really the crux of today's webinar is the program itself. Um, a funding source and the needs that we can't <laughs> underestimate. Um, we've got to have the money to do it. And we know that. And then aligning the programs, um, really important with everything else that uh, our own State Department of Education is doing. And finally, there's one last one that's been added that's most important, and it all hits home with us, and that's the measuring what we do, how we do it, and the performance of all these different things. That's part of any program we do. Um, what do we already have in place in Florida? We're, we are so fortunate that our leaders uh, have been proactive for years in developing and, and really buying into our career clusters and our career pathways. All of you, I'm sure, know that we have 17 career clusters that we've no, uh, noted in the state of Florida. But what you might not know is that the Department of Education has worked, looked at the clusters, looked at the pathways, and have come up with a real um, wonderful way of doing things with connecting everything. Those of you who might already have your IPDA website pulled up, it's great if you don't. It'd be great if you could on a computer pull up the IPDA website at any point and you can see that when you go to your resource tab under AECP, and again, some of you might have forgotten, AECP, that's our Adult Ed Career Pathways section within IPDA. Go down under Toolkits, and if you click on the Toolkit icon, you will find a nice version where you're showing the cluster and then the pathway. That's not enough. Then the Department of Education moves right into programs of study. These are all excellent first step initiatives that you can do immediately after going through this webinar. Go and take a look. Get in there. Delve into it. Check it out. It starts the dialogue with your career and tech people, your post-secondary adult vocational people, your college certificate, your tech center people. This, these are all programs of study. <clears throat> Again, our State Department was proactive in this. What you need to do, however, is concentrate what is in your county. Not just your institution, but your county. Take a look at the programs of study. At the bottom of the form, you're concentrating on, and this is hard to see, I understand, on your screen probably, but at the bottom of this form, it's concentrating on your post-secondary options, which is very important. Um, again, but I wanted you to see that the programs of study are out there for every single career cluster um, and a pathway and it's very important that you work with your local people to find out what is going on in your own community. All right, most um, district and uh, community colleges have developed career pathway roadmaps and those were um, developed at the beginning of our Career Pathways initiatives in the state of Florida. We wanted to show you a few examples of what some of the Career Pathway roadmaps look like from district to district. The first one we put on the screen is the one from Lake Tech. Um, they have developed a Career Pathway that's very student friendly. It has um, uh, icons that represent different stages along the student's pathway. And again, a Career Pathway refers to ba basically a highway to get me from where I am now to the career that I want to have. Multiple on-ramps and off-ramps that give students options to have some educational opportunity, go off and have some employment, come back on, uh, on that education pathway and further their education. Another example is from Withacuchi Technical Institute, now Withacuchi Technical College. Um, and you'll see they took a different, uh, different format. They used uh, educational path on one side and aligned that with a career path on the other to show direct linkages between different types of educational programs and jobs that uh, were available to students. I know these are available in both cases through those school district and tech center websites. You know, I think it's real interesting. I, again, uh, I haven't had an opportunity to go and really click on and look at many different counties 
uh, school districts, tech centers, colleges. It is amazing what our adult educators who have taken this and run with it as far as what they put up on the websites. Um, we use tech, uh, Lake Tech as an example. Unbelievable. Just got to do a shout out to them. You click on theirs. You actually click on a cluster. Takes you to the cluster. Takes you through the whole career uh, roadmap and pathway. Awesome. We've got uh, other districts as well. Hillsboro has an awesome one. Sarasota. I was with last week. Manatee. Unbelievable resources. Um, there's got to be someone at each of your institutions that this is their wonder, one thing that they love to do. Seek them out. I th I've been very impressed with what's out there already. Another example is Miami-Dade County, and again, clicking on different clusters will take students to a list of different jobs that are available, programs that are available for educational opportunities within that district, and again, all of them have been aligned to local industry, local business, local uh, employment opportunities. Before we can talk about what goes on in the classroom, and moving towards both the implementation of college and career readiness standards in conjunction with our career pathways and our contextualized instruction, one of the first things that really impacts what happens to our students is what happens when they first meet with us and what kind of support services that we provide for them. Um, Again, it's dear to my heart, being a former guidance counselor, but I recognize that in the state of Florida, there are many quality adult education programs that are very small. And those programs do not have the luxury of having a full department of support services or student services or guidance counselors or advisors. Some don't even have dedicated career pathways or transition assistance. Um, it's not to diminish at all what goes on in those small programs or site-based programs, but to emphasize, when you look at adult education students, we know that they come to us with a multitude of, many of them, challenges. Um, some are very, very serious. Some are recent dropouts who are still children who enter our adult education world at 16 and have much different issues than the 40-year-old mom of four kids. Um, but again, when you look at a quality um, student support service program, these are the things we're talking about in some way. And again, if this does not mean, nor are we saying, that one person who is sitting at a site two nights a week from 6 until 9 is going to be providing this. You should not be providing this. What we're saying is, is that we hope that all of you after today will really seriously think, where can I find these services? Who do I go to? What partners can I have? whether those partners are within my institution or whether they're an outside partner such as Goodwill, your one-stop center, um, Catholic Charities, whatever partners. So again, larger programs are going to have all of these and they're going to be able to provide all of these in a much easier way and a dedicated way. But again, communicating and collaborating with people in your institution can make it happen. Oftentimes when students come into an adult education program, they really don't have a clear idea of a career goal. They may, they may have some idea, but no real clear picture of, of what that end, end result would be. So even a teacher in a small program can provide students with access to online resources for career exploration, uh, print resources, and opportunities to, to go out and, and shadow or, or uh, spend some time in different industries within uh, their community. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely right. Okay, so again, what we're saying today is hopefully you will leave today with an increase uh, and an excitement about an increased emphasis on the, this intake and placement process because it's a huge step for most of the, the adults that we deal with. We want to make sure it's a positive one. And it doesn't matter, again, whether or not your institution does an Im immediate assessment or within a period of time does an assessment. The main thing to remember is that many of these adults left school because of either very disappointing results or failure in their minds at assessments. Um, so we just want to put a little thought in your mind out there. Maybe we need to go back and relook at how we do that initial interview and that initial intake process. Um, again, when you hook up, whether you do it at the very beginning or during the first week, when you connect that caring adult educator with the potential student, you're immediately building those relationships. Even if that student is not placed in a particular teacher's class or a level, you've built that connection. It's someone on that campus. You might only see them in the hallway or at lunch. But if nothing else, you're empowering that student with, I can do this. I know someone here and I can do this. Now, again, whether you do it as a separate intake process, which we know a lot of schools, a lot of tech centers, a lot of colleges, they have a set procedure. It's very, uh, it's advertised, it's done several days a week, several days a month, once a month, whatever, but it is advertised and every single student goes through a standard intake procedure. Um, but there are other ways to do this, and we wanted to bring note of this because the whole goal here is to hopefully get everybody to understand the old way of doing things is gone. It's over. It's passe. We are moving on. Career planning, career pathways, contextualization, all of these things that we're trying to, to get everybody to open their eyes to are going to be everyone's responsibility, not just an intake person not just a career pathways person, and, and definitely not just the teacher's responsibility, but every single person. And again, that takes us to what have we been doing in Florida? We have relied for years, and it's been a good reliance, on our Florida choices. Um, as part of our grant process, um, and really what we have been directed to do for several years, we all should have been using a career planning process within our intake, and then connecting that to what educational opportunities we provide to students. Um, Choices has now taken us to, a lot of you have heard this, next year starting in, or this year starting in July, um, Florida's next step, we are going to move from Florida Choices, and we're going to raise the bar a little bit, and we're going to move into a new system called Cooter. Some of you have worked with Cooter. Some of you have heard this. Some of you have already talked to people at the state about this. Um, I was not familiar with Cooter, I have to tell you, so I started doing some research. Um, very interesting, very, very interesting. They're, they really are research-based. Um, they, have, they have over 250,000 new users each month. Um, they have over 12,000 sites, and they've got 120 custom websites that are portals, so it gives you a lot of opportunity. Same basic things as what we're used to with choices, but I just wanted to put it up there. It kind of whets your appetite a little bit about what's to come. Um, all this will be coming to you in the future. Uh, of course, there will have to be training sessions and informational sessions. And it, again, we're still in Choices. Choices is still serving our needs. But we just wanted to let you know we, we would be remiss in putting all of our emphasis on Choices when we know now that we're going to be moving in to a new world uh, of Cooter. Um, and as you can see, it still basically does the same thing. It's just going to hopefully give us a, a little bit better opportunity to match with our students' needs and to open up the doors to new things. So why do we do this? 
Why do we focus on developing a career plan when the student comes to us? And all of you know why. Because if they don't see the why and they don't see the relevance, our adult students, unfortunately, many times do not stick with us. Um, again, for many of them, it's not been a positive experience for school. We do all that we can do to make it a positive experience. But for years, a lot of our programs have relied on students coming in, taping, and then giving them an appropriate level text or material to go and work on. Or we put them on a computer, and then we provide them supplemental instruction with our face-to-face -face teachers. I, the, the new thinking is if we really want to look at our retention, we want to look at our transition, we want to look at our workplace placement, the key to this is tying everything we can to that student's career goal and making them realize they can do it. Next, I'm just going to interject that we know that when a student is already interested in a topic, it's much easier for them to um, transition new skills into that particular area. So if a student is interested in, in working on cars and they've been doing that for a long time and it's something they get excited about, when you're trying to teach them math or language concepts, if you can do it in a context of, of an area that they're already interested in, we know um, that that gives them the opportunity to use what they know to figure out new things. And it helps them to, to, to formulate some, some new ideas and connect learning. This is just a quote, again, that brings it home to us. It's from Links. Most of you have used uh, references from Links and articles and tech, um, different uh, toolkits. Um, uh, it's an awesome site, an off awesome group, and they have a lot of good things out there. We're, we're going to give you a link at the end. But again, as we went through and we have started our implementation of college and career readiness standards throughout the state, I think it's become very clear that we all have to be willing to change what and how we teach if we're going to get the results that we now are, we want to get and we've got to show um, to not only our state but to the uh, national organizations. So if we do, and if we're real, willing to raise the bar, what kind of outcomes do you think that we will see? Hopefully, we'll keep the students. They'll want to, to finish. They'll have steps along the way. The scaffolding will be done. They'll feel success. Um, again, we're going to be looked at. It's a new day in adult education. How many of our students are going to be able to transition to the next level? How many of them are going to be at the next level at the end of that year? Are we going to have our students, once our CCRS, our standards are implemented, are we going to see a definite change in the number of our adult graduates who have to go or need remedial? We absolutely should. If we're raising the bar and, and implementing those college and career readiness standards and these new career pathways, we absolutely should see a reduced number of adult ed students who have to take remedial. The other thing is prepared uh, workers. If we go back and to some of those first slides and really, really think about partnering with our local employers, uh, having them really tell us what is needed, not just the specific technical skill, but the soft skill and the employability skill, then hopefully when our students finish with our adult education in, uh, courses, they'll be able to transition and be right there in the workplace and be successful. So how can we make it happen? I know I've seen a, a couple of comments where folks are expressing a little bit of anxiety about making these changes in the classroom. But contextualized teaching and learning is really a tool and a focus that will help us make that transition for our students. Creative lesson planning and collaboration between AGE and CTE instructors can also help students connect what they already know and are interested in to those academic skills we know they need assistance with. Also matching instruction to student learning styles and, and remembering that the application of academic skills 
in the context of a, a real world uh, work situation and that relevance to what a student's future career goals is matters. It does. And it helps students, um, again, feel empowered to move forward in their, in their education. Also using student data to drive instruction. It's really important that we have an opportunity to find out with our students what their career goals are. Um, once we have that, that, that knowledge, we can start developing some of those creative lessons and contextualizing our instruction in those areas that we know students already have a keen interest in. Contextualized instruction connects students to learning by building in what they already know through their own frame of reference. It helps students develop new skills in the context of their career field of interest. Anything you teach a student in terms of, of academic skills that enhances their, their knowledge and their ability to, to connect concepts and vocabulary in a future job field is only going to help that student be successful in their transition. Integrating reading, writing, and math skills within the context of CTE content helps students build critical thinking skills while applying what they've learned. And again, anytime we can connect with employers or CTE instructors to allow students to test their skills, their academic skills, in workplace situations will help cement that learning and empower students to move forward. Contextualized instruction connects current career skills and the needs of employers to adult education and CTE curriculum. Having all those folks together at the table or involving those folks with providing input to lessons that we provide students in adult education classrooms and in CTE classrooms, again, empowers students for successful transitions and employment. Here's the, here's the main thing. So here we go with examples um, that many of you we know are already using because we've heard. Um, the questions are coming in quickly about resources, and uh, stay tuned, we're getting there. <laughs> we wanted to show you some specific examples. Uh, many career tech centers and colleges have programs in, that are related to electronics or electrical. And again, if you look at these, just these quick examples, you'll see applied mathematics, you'll see critical thinking, problem solving skills. And again, these are just some examples. Um, in the area of, and I'm going to get my slide to switch over here for us, in nursing, applied reading mathematics and technology skills, measurement, uh, mathematical calculations, being able to utilize technologies for problem solving, um, the new electronic uh, medical records documentation has everything to do with problem solving, critical thinking, uh, language skills, technical reading. Anything we can do through adult education that empowers students for successful transitions to these types of real world work opportunities is only, only going to ultimately help our students be successful. Here is another example of applied mathematics in nursing. Um, how many of you would like to think that your nurses <laughs> understand how to adjust dosages according to uh, physicians' uh, orders? Again, applied mathematics, critical thinking, um, and reading, technical reading skills. Great examples. This looks very similar to the example we saw in electronics. Again, uh, very technical. And our students that are leaving us from adult education programs need to be prepared for success in these areas. Culinary arts, all about measurement and um, conversions, technical reading. So how do we plan for a contextualized instruction? And we see some of the questions that are coming in. I'm the adult ed teacher. I teach uh, students to be prepared for TAPE success. I'm preparing them for success on the GED. The main thing is just focusing on application, not just possessing those skills, not being able to just demonstrate those skills for a test, but really being able to apply our basic skills and knowledge in the context of a chosen career path. So as Carolyn mentioned earlier, helping students identify what that career path is is critical. But then also helping them connect those basic academic skills that we're teaching them in adult ed to that career field is, is what really is going to lead to long-term student success. Um, helping students identify learning tasks, helping them choose learning tasks, and then identify what knowledge and skills are needed to accomplish the task will again help students and empower them and help us with retention and persistence. It does require a shift in curriculum development and instruction for many adult education instructors. Planning is key. It does require time. 
uh, lots of thought, flexibility, and creativity. But again, anytime we can connect our lesson planning to what we do in our, in our for, for what we do in our adult ed classrooms with what's happening in our CTE classrooms, uh, will we'll allow us as adult educators to provide better connections to real world learning for our students. You know, the one thing we talked about a little bit uh, before, this is new. Um, it is challenging. It's not only challenging for the students, it's definitely challenging for all of us. Um, when we think about developing curriculum, when we think about going outside of our comfort zone, um, reaching out to those career and tech instructors, taking a look at what actually is going on in those programs, and then working together and incorporating those within the adult general education courses, whether it's ABE, GED, ESOL, whether it's in corrections, whatever. Um, it is a stretch. Um, we're throwing a lot of things out at our adult educators. We started last year. I keep repeating the college and career readiness standards because we really raised the bar with rolling that out with literacy this year. It's coming with math next year. Now we're adding the new WIOA mandates that we really focus as well on career pathways and contextualized instruction. It is a challenge. We understand that. Um, if, however, the teacher and the student can chunk things out and experience success, small steps, small goals, this requiring a shift in the curriculum development process and instruction, that, that's to say the least, that it's a major shift. We talked about shifts in literacy. We have shifts in the mathematical instruction. This is a major shift. Um, I think the picture is telling. It probably looks very similar to everyone's desk when you try to pull things together from many different resources and develop a lesson. Um, but the main thing here is that we wanted today to do a, an overview of this to get you thinking because there are many things that will come from this. We've got excellent educators out there who are already utilizing career pathways to develop contextualized instructional manuals, activities, lessons, and we're going to be doing more and they will come. But small steps. Do something. Pick something you and your student feel comfortable with and experience success, even if it's small. We've had a couple of questions come in about developing resources. Um, and again, we wanted to focus on how do we target students to jobs within your local area? Because it really does need to prepare students for jobs in the county where you live. Ask your CTE instructors, either at your institution or at, at surrounding institutions, ask those CTE instructors and local employers for lists of skills, vocabulary tools, concepts that students will need to know and use to be successful either in the post-secondary training program or in an employment situation. Um, in a previous school where I worked, we actually asked CTE instructors to provide us with a list of concepts and vocabulary and then we used those different um, lists to help us formulate instruction, whether it was in, for instance, prefixes and suffixes. We looked at, at prefixes and suffixes that kind of spanned across different uh, career clusters and helped students see that the relevance of what they were, they were learning about in an adult ed classroom to what they would be learning about in a health sciences classroom, an automotive program, or a computer class. We also um, obtained sample textbooks and reference materials used in CTE programs. Uh, we provided a full set of every CTE textbook and reference manual, technical manual, in each of the adult ed classrooms so that students could look at examples of mathematics, uh, math formulas, um, technology concepts, and technical reading to see, again, how those, uh, ba those basic academic skills uh, were applied in a, in a CTE program that they were interested in. Another idea was to develop kits to house items for use in adult education classrooms. And what we're talking about there are realia kits. 
actual examples of tools and objects that students would be utilizing in a CTE program or in an employment situation so they could again see how they would be utilizing mathematics or applying technical reading or being able to um, perform critical thinking exercises by looking at data, uh, for, again, from a situation that, that they're hoping to work in down the road. I think, you know, one thing that many times we forget, and some of our adult educators have not come from the career and tech world or, or uh, might have come right from the K-12, maybe they were a math teacher. Um, when you think about it, we are partners with career and tech. In the umbrella, through the state, and through the national groups, we are connected at the hip to our career and tech uh, partners and our colleagues. So um, it's a new thinking, it's a new way of thinking, but these are your colleagues. Reach out to them, get them excited. Um, some of you who are not on the same campus or near it's going to be a little bit harder, but there are so many um, ways um, that you can meet and get those local uh, PSAV, uh, your post-secondary adult vocational instructors involved with your students and your classes, um, even if it's nothing more than arranging a field trip. If you've got ABE students and GED students and you've talked about and you're using career pathways, but it's still just not real to them, make it real. Uh, either get the people to come into your courses or take the students. Have class actually at your tech center or at the college. Um, most of the time, um, the tech center people and our district PSAV people and our college people will roll out the red carpet because really they're the recipients of our students um, and will be. So don't be um, scared. Don't, don't be absolutely overwhelmed. Start by doing something with those career and tech teachers and I think that that will make them really excited about the academic part of this. The next slide is going to show you just an example from a practical nursing program when they were asked to provide a list of concepts. Um, and they came up with the, with the categories for mathematics, your dimensional analysis, dosage, fractions. They very quickly were able to put together a list of skills that students needed to have coming out of an adult education uh, program or a high school program for that matter. Um, different terminology, um, things that, you know, medical terms. And then again, using large plastic tubs or whatever, whatever you have that, that's available to you to organize materials by career cluster or program so that they're available for easy access in your adult ed programs. And oftentimes CTE teachers have sample textbooks, they have extra you know, small tools, they have manuals that they're willing to donate even if it's a prior edition. Um, they've just adopted, you know, edition number six. They might be willing to give you some of the older editions so that students, again, in your adult ed classroom can see that application of those basic academic skills in the context of their future career plans. And it is exciting. When students start making those connections, um, it's empowering. Some of the questions, again, had to do with, you know, where can we find the literacy resources? One of the questions was, you know, how do we address this? vendor materials, and someone else already made a comment that there are some great vendor materials out there. Um, ask ask your, your vendors that you're currently using, what do you have available for us to use for contextualized instruction for our adult ed students who we have identified career clusters for? But by no means are we saying we are not recommending any specific text or software or any specific vendor materials. We're only recommending that you take a look, see what your local uh, PSAB and college uh, courses, your certificate programs are using, and hopefully build on that. Um, but again, we are just referencing vendor materials as possible resources for your consideration. Um, there are so many adult basic education, ESOL, career-related materials currently available um, online. Um, you 
it, it can be overwhelming. Many more are being developed. I think some of you at ACE this year, um, I noticed uh, as people went around into the, is it the vendor area? Yes. The, um, the vendor area. Um, there were so many of our teachers who were so interested in some of the vendors who had a CTE, Career Pathways, Contextualized Learning Connection. That's where the interest was. So those uh, publishers are very much into knowing what the WIOA requirements are going to be and trying to come up with things that will meet uh, those needs within the classroom. But they are absolutely they will never be as rich as what kind of materials and resources can be developed by working together with your colleagues and with sharing materials. And that's what we'd like to focus on a little bit here in this slide, too. Um, the sharing and the collaboration between all of us in this state, what we can produce just by working together um, is unbelievable. The, I have to, again, plug the IFDAY website. We're trying very, very hard every day to get things up on the IFDAY website to have people around the state who are subject matter experts, we call it, in, in uh, every single subject area to develop things and share those things um, after they have been vetted and looked at and make sure that they follow the format. and and cover the things that need to be covered according to our standards. Um, Site-based and district and college-based organizations, think about just at your organization, there's at least one person at your site probably that you have worked together with, that you've team taught or you've developed a, a product and who knows, you might never have had the opportunity to share that, but you think it's a great activity. That's what we're looking for. Um, Judy, she's a master of the CTE and the PSAV, the career and tech end of what the materials and the kits. Um, it's really interesting if you throw it out to your students to see what the students themselves will bring into the classroom. Uh, Forming small and student-led professional learning groups, uh, students who have like career pathways, not necessarily like specific jobs, but in the same pathway, letting them get together, holding 15, 20 minutes uh, at the end of each class period of like groups, talking about things, having them bring each person bring in one thing, a material, a publication, a magazine, a trade a, journal, a trade journal. Mm -hmm. the, um, a, those of us who uh, don't put things together very well, if they're into mechanics, have them bring in the guide to change the oil filter or a tire, those kinds of things brought in and then the time set aside at the end or beginning or middle of class when it's just time to take a break from the academic even though they don't realize it is academic, and have it student-run group per career pathway area. Unbelievable. All of a sudden, the fun, all of a sudden, the student wants to come back the next time because they were empowered and someone wants, well, how do I do that? That is what fires them up to want to come back and then attack those hard things like math, percentages, or frat, whatever it is that they're having a hard time with. Um, web-based resources, I cannot say enough about web-based resources. There's so much. It can be overwhelming. Don't let it. We have listed many things here. I've checked, at least as of the other day, all of the links were up and they went right to what these uh, links say they are. And what we're going to do after today is I'm going to, we're going to have a handout that will be up on the IFDAY website, and it's just going to tell you what the, what let's say, CORD is, and it's going to give you the web address, and it's going to actually let you say, where do I need to go for this, or where could I find something on the occupation that's going to be in 2015? 
hopefully we'll give you that. It'll all be in one document. It'll be under a handout. It'll be on the IPDAY website under this webinar. That's coming. Um, the web-based the web -based resources, we hope people will add to. These at the end, if you go through, these at the end, again, I went back and looked at things that our own Department of Education has done over the last five years, um, then what IPDAY has done over the last year and a half. As you know, we all participated in DOE-sponsored Career Pathway uh, grants. Many people were recipients of those. There are excellent references and re uh, resources from those uh, people who got those grants we need to pull together. We mentioned some of the resources. You'll see, well, why are we looking at Michigan or why are we looking at uh, California? Again, these are just resources for you to take a look at. I pulled things from every single, every single thing that's up here today I have gone to and pulled something very interesting from or something that caught my eye. Um, and you should too, including Someone turned me on, one of the adult educators in the state turned me on to I Want to Teach Forever website. I, in all my years, have never been to I Want to Teach Forever website. And if you haven't been, you know, that's something, there's something up there right there you might want to go to. It's a funny little thing. It's funny on all of us who do professional development because it's, again, uh, uh, an example, a non-example of professional development I think everybody will laugh at and put this in kind of a funny, uh, funny end to this presentation because I, I think that a lot of people are overwhelmed with all the things that we're being asked to do. Again, we want to leave you with don't. Don't be overwhelmed. Take a small step. Even if you get together with one other person pull some of these resources, come up with an activity, try something, that's the first step. Oftentimes, just getting students to talk about their goals for their future and what next steps do they have planned for their education will lead to the kinds of discussions that we're talking about. And it gives you some guidance as to you know, who you want to reach out to as a partner. Um, if you have students that indicate that they're really interested in health science and health care, um, then you'll know to reach out to area uh, CTE programs or college, community college programs or employers that can offer you some support in, in making sure your students um, are, are getting opportunities for contextualized instruction in that particular area. And folks really are receptive to that. We have found, and again, I'm, I'm in a, a different county now. I've been here for a fairly short time. And they were very, very receptive to finding out uh, that, that we wanted to make sure our students we're really better prepared for success either uh, you know, to work for them or to, to articulate to a different uh, educational program. So um, it'll be exciting. All right, we are going to be planning a future webinar where we're going to be providing you with some sample lesson plans and some examples of what contextualized instruction might look like in some different career clusters and pathways. So we hope that you'll stay tuned to the FJ website and, um, and we'll see you again in the future. Um, we're open to questions and answers time at this point. And again, if you have any questions that we didn't address or you just want some guidance as to maybe the next step or a, a resource we might have mentioned, please don't hesitate to email Carolyn or I. We'd be more than happy to respond. And we're going to go ahead and turn it over to Ms. June Raw. Well, thank you, Carolyn and Judy, for this great webinar today. It's just been a wealth of resources that I'm sure that the field will be able to tap into. Just a few reminders that all of these webinars are recorded and you can pass them on to your staff uh, in whatever format that you'd like. They are all recorded and they are all on the IPDAY website. Uh, if you just hit the dial of AECP and click over to webinars, it will be there for you. So I encourage all of you to stay connected with us. We'd love to hear from you. Go into the uh, Florida um, IPDA website and um, just send us an email. Thank you very much. Judy? Yes, ma'am. <laughs>
again, thank you for your attention, folks. And we've really enjoyed the opportunity to share with you. And we'd love to hear your ideas as well. So we're looking forward to uh, getting some emails. Have a good afternoon.